Hello and welcome to another outdoor video by yours truly. Um, this time I'm on the summit of Buckton Pike. Um, I'm just going to adjust you here. Get a little bit more in at the background. Apologies for the wobble. That's the summit. Cairn. And that is the mountain of Penny Ghent behind there. Which is uh, one of the three peaks in the Yorkshire Dales. And Buckton Pike is uh, it's an historic place. Uh, I'll just get in shot. Yeah, what I'm doing here is I'm experimenting. I've got, I've got it on the little tripod. Uh, that's the camera phone, and uh, I've got it on top of the trig point on Buckton Pike. There's no wind at all today. Literally nothing. A very rare occurrence. So I thought I'd try this out. I can sort of move about a bit. <laughs> so yeah, Buckton Pike. Buckton Pike. Buckton Pike is historic to the fact that a World War Two a Polish aircraft actually crashed into this mountain uh, back in World War II, 1942. Um, there's a memorial there that was created by one of the survivors. I think five of the airmen perished, but uh, there was a survivor. And uh, he managed to uh, get down to Buckden village and uh, raise the alarm and that. Um, and the story goes, it was a snowy night, it was the end of November. Um, and he followed some fox's footprints in the snow back down to safety, back down to the village. So, yeah, and the memorial. I visited that last night. It's uh, it's 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 a fantastic um, tribute to those guys. It's it's like a big cross set into uh, into stone there, and there was some um, like flowers and other bits of uh, memorial stuff left around it. So yeah, yeah. It is historic for that reason. Um, the National Trust have actually built like um, a stone flagged path from the summit here over the bog to it, which is about a kilometre away. Because um, obviously a lot of people want to come up and uh, pay tribute to those guys. But, uh, I just thought I'd drop that one in there, but uh, it, it is a historic place. Anyway, I'm going to talk about... What am I going to talk about? Oh yeah, do not. Do, oh, I could disappear on this car and bob up again. Uh, I want to talk about um, do not delete your stuff. Listen back to your stuff before you delete it. So if you record a few takes, whether it's say, I don't know, you're doing some tracks or, or like live videos or whatever it is, um, I'd, I'd recommend always even though you think you've oh yeah that was the one that's the take always have a listen back before you delete stuff because you just don't know there might be some magic in there there might be something in there you you, you think oh yeah i like that i could use that and, and maybe do an even better take or, or whatever you're going to do with it but uh yeah just always uh, even if you think yeah that was definitely the take have a listen back i mean i've done it where i've gone yeah that was the one that was the that was the best take i've done but I've listened back just in case, and then I've ended up using another take that just had more soul to it, vibe to it, feel to it, even if it might have had the odd fluffer in it. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, don't be impatient. Listen back to your stuff before you delete it, I'd say. Next thing up, um, somebody the other day made a comment on one of my videos. Um, I think it was a pedal video about... Uh, the, the, some of the licks sounded like Bill Nelson from uh, Bebop Deluxe and that intrigued me because when I was sort of first starting out on guitar yeah I was right into Bebop Deluxe and that and I bought the live in the air age album and I, I did a deep dive on them and all that but I haven't really listened to their stuff for years so I went back and listened to a load of Bebop Deluxe and lo and behold yeah I could hear little bits of Bill Nelson in me playing like you know it's amazing that you think, you know, he's the last person I would have remembered as an influence. But when I listen back, it's there. It's not massively obvious, but there's little licks and things that are there, that are his and that. And I'd, I highly recommend you check out Bill Nelson, especially during his Bebop Deluxe uh, era. There's plenty on YouTube. It's, it's, he's, he was an amazing guitar player. Um, but he was like um, an anti-guitar here, if you want. He, he he wasn't really into all the ego side of it. He just had loads of ability. So it's definitely worth checking out. Um, I'm running out of cam camera battery here, I think, so I'm going to knock it on the head. 
I think I was going. Oh yeah, I was going to talk about one last thing, and that was the Gibson Flying V. Um, really strung the oh, it's really strung my Gibson V up the other day. Give the neck a good oil, the well the fretboard and all the rest of it. Checked it over. So I'm using that quite a lot in videos at the moment, and it just got me back. Got me back thinking to my association with that guitar, which started in 1981. Not that particular guitar. This was a, a, a 70s V. That was my first serious guitar. Um, Two-tone sunburst. It's the guitar I should never have got rid of. Everybody's got a story like that, haven't they? They should have kept hold of it. I should have kept hold of it. I, I really regret uh, trading it in. But I tried it in for another V, which was like a Schenker finish, uh, custom shot one. But that had a trem on it. And the tra I, I, I was in a band where we would do more and more stuff that required that. Um, it required the use of a trem, and I only had one guitar, so I went with that. That served me well for 15 years um then like knee problems and back problems it just became a real hassle to to play and uh, especially sat down and that and uh, i went back to strats i started out on strat copies and that japanese strat copies so i went back to strats and that um for a bit and in 2012 um somebody made me an offer that i just couldn't refuse and that was uh another flying v i mean it was just it, it, it suited both parties really he he needed the money and uh you know and it was a fair offer and i was happy to help him out but uh yeah and that's the one you see in the videos he use now which is a 2000 uh 40th anniversary v so that's 23 years old it'll be it's almost vintage now that thing but it's a lovely bit of wood and that I, i've changed the tuners on it uh and i changed the pickups to sir thornbuckers which are amongst my favorite unbuckers um it's had a new switch um the, the frets are kind of like the vintage style frets on it which are not everybody's taste but i don't mind them at all it's a, it's a lovely guitar and i'm happy to say you know keeping on with the v lineage really um it's a guitar I've been kind of associated with on the local scene. Um, I'm happy to keep playing it, you know, every time it comes out, it's a joy. So it just remains for me to say, uh, thanks for watching this video and this glorious autumnal sunshine on Buckden Pike. Uh, stay well, keep well, and I'll see you later, guys. Bye.